I've learned stuff from watching both of them because they actually understand what people like. like I'm, I'm too autistic to understand that. So, like, I basically understand what the people like from watching you guys and then figuring out, like, yeah, that's that's a cool technique or, like, you know, that's, um, that's like, relatable right. topics or that, that kind of stuff. And also you guys just understand the beast that is the net. And I'm always amazed at that mm. because that's something – Honestly, that there are maybe 10% of our generation employed in just being like, oh, it's some hot chick that knows what Instagram is. Yeah, give her $60,000 a year to post about orange juice, you know. But but, but you guys actually know what social media is. That's remarkable. I'm still still at Oz. Sorry. (laughs) So what what exactly do you mean by that? Do you mean just the sort of content we're putting out? The content you're putting out, the 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 length of the content, the actual like right, the, how right. how relate how you actually get it to relate to an audience, right? How you get it seen? I I you test, guys do it. I test a lot of shit. Like I put something out this week, which was a sketch, and I never do sketches, and it didn't do great, but that's okay. And it's just interesting to see what works because yeah. you can't make yeah. a viral mm-hmm. video. A lot of it is trial and error. It's just putting stuff out there and hoping it sticks. Like, I mean, it's it's. I guess it's the same with TV shows and, and those type of things. You hope it works. But as you said, it's a, it's a slow rise. My rise started uh, in Newcastle in like 2012 when I first started doing my first, my first sort of like, I guess it's sort of an open mic thing was like a speech for a school captain where I would just crack <laughs> jokes, right? That was like my first day. Did you get, were you the school captain? No, I got, listen, I, I was three people, right? Three positions, yeah. school captain, vice captain, and then like the head of the SRC. I got the head of the SRC. All oh, right, participation. Yeah. And then I tried, <laughs> my big movement was I was going to bring in the school hats, right? That all, from ne- the ex year year seven had to wear school hats. That was going to be my oh, legacy. And everyone was going to hate me because I made these kids wear school hats, right? And then this guy, politics. That's this guy amazing. stood up. He's like, no, you're doing this as a joke. And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the whole point of it. <laughs> and they put the How kibosh that? on that, which was very upsetting. But uh, the people who always win are like, I'm going to put Coke in the bubblers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We're voting for that guy. <laughs> Everyday sport day. And my he ro- gets us. <laughs> so mine was like from there. I started oh, doing stand up and then I started to meet people like Neil and Frenchie and Josh Wade and I was opening up for these guys on the road and I saw that they were making videos and they were getting an audience. I thought, well, I need to do that. They all said I needed to do that and then eventually I just did that. So it was like a five or six years sort of like yeah. thing like that to, to the point I am now. Um, so- I'm shocked more comedians don't see – what a lot of us have achieved and, yeah. and just get on the internet. No, I, you it's know why. It truly shocks like me. Mainstream no, you comments. said it. You, I remember you saying this what? three years ago. Most comedians would rather get a write-up in the Sydney Morning Herald than have an audience. It's hilarious. Yeah, that's disgusting. Part of it. That's part of it, yeah. But what, what, sure. do you, what do you think it is then? Because that's what I reckon it is. They just have this little bubble that they get into and – all they're doing is trying to impress that bubble, which is essentially 200 people That's the in thing, the country. Yeah, they're not thinking about it practically, I think. They're not thinking about, like, appealing to a demographic of yeah. human beings. They don't treat it like a business. And everyone's an individual business in this comedy. Yeah, mm. yeah. Competing against. Yeah. You're not competing against each other, but you are trying to rise somewhere near the top. And they don't treat it like that. They treat it as, oh, I need to fit into these people. And the only way, mm. even when I started getting gigs in Sydney outside of Newcastle, I, I was kicked out of the so-called echo chamber bubble, that type of thing that I was in because obviously I was too, I was, uh, I was. Weren't s- punk enough. I wasn't punk <laughs> enough, right? I was in the mainstream. I was freaking out. <laughs> mm. I was starting to get rooms in, in Sydney that Neil was doing as well. And then people saw that as like, no, 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 he's, he's not one of us sort of thing. And people freak out like that. Mm. It's Particularly, very tribalistic, isn't it? It is. It's yeah. a tribal thing. Mm. It's trying, they're trying to belong to something. And comedy is their vice, their thing that they get around. And as soon as you start doing stuff online, you're seen as the, the anti, the, the anti-establishment sort of thing. And mm. You're not, you're not cool anymore. It, that is weird, isn't it? Like, it you, is, because that's the whole essence of stand-up comedy. Yeah. It's anti-establishment. But, but, but also all of the comedians in the US have embraced it, but yeah. not here. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like all of the well-known, all the guys that have uh, Netflix-related specials, bar maybe like a Kevin Hart, they've yeah. all embraced social media slash the internet, say YouTube in some sort of way. They have to there. Because the only way because you can get so noticed in America is to have your own audience. Whereas yeah. in Australia, you can climb through the ranks by doing the festivals. And yes, by getting enough write-ups in the Sydney Morning Herald or whatever the publication is, you it's can then get noticed fed. by 
TV producers. A lot of the stuff is like, okay, this is the next guy that you have to like. This is the next comedian that you're going to watch. It's mm. a bit like that, yeah. It's like, okay, not to name any names, but this is the next comedian that's big and you're going to like them and they're going to sell out at Melbourne because you've seen them on the TV. Mm. Mm. And There's definitely a, a, a hierarchy. 100%. And they there pick is. and choose who they the next big choose. ones are. Which is why I, as some white dude, was never going to be a famous comedian in Australia unless I found my own audience. Mm. Yeah. Or took you know? a time machine to the 80s. That yeah. was about it. <laughs> Which, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Obviously, ways. it's good to have different uh, people of all different. Uh, you Not know. if they don't have skill. Yeah. But that's, that's the thing that's getting pushed thing. up that's, now. Yeah, yeah. Just anyone that just fits the quota, you know what I mean? And it's just like, yeah, but here's the problem. You're not funny at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon? Uh, like, like you look at ABC comedy. 100. But on the top of that, the fact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's more degrading as someone who is a minority. It's more degrading to assume exactly. I've just been handed something because of my thing. And I will say, you know, t- maybe 10, 15 years ago, there might have been less of an appetite for what you could call diverse comedy. Uh, but Definitely. now it's gone so far the other way that you just have to be diverse and then regardless of the quality mm. of the content you're producing, you get pushed up. And both of those are wrong, in yeah. my opinion. 